my name is Julian McQueen. I'm the founder and CEO of Innisfree Hotels. We started our company 35 years ago. We develop, uh, construct, own and manage hotels. Kind of started from the ground up, literally as a bus boy. I started when I was 15 years old. It seems sometimes more unique these days to start, you know, from the bottom up. Uh, there's so many technology companies that come in and your overnight success kind of thing. But um, I like to say after 35 years, I'm an overnight success. So we've now got a company with a little over half a billion dollars in assets. Uh, we have uh, 2000 employees, 24 locations. This is this is where my my love is. We were um, from Birmingham, Alabama, and you know the the area where most people from uh, Birmingham visit is in the Gulf Coast of Florida, on the Panhandle, the northwest section of Florida. 15 years old, and my parents said it's time to go home, and I said, well, I'd really like to stay, and they said, great, get a job, and you can stay. So um, I literally hitchhiked down the road. And I found a hotel that was being run by a bunch of college kids. They had a little bunk room and I started bussing tables. And the next year I came back, I was a waiter. And the next year I came back for the summer, I was a dining room manager at 17, played hard, worked hard and got a reference. That reference led me to a night auditor position, which is from 11 at night to seven in the morning. So I did that for four years, ended up with a degree in psychology which was fairly worthless at the bachelor level. And I had eight years of hotel experience. I just stayed in it and never got out. That's 55 years ago. Good grief, 55 years ago. So this is what I do. I love, I love it. We have adopted what we call the triple bottom line approach to business. Uh, you know, it's people, planet, and profit in that order. This is not a new concept. We embraced it about maybe 15 years ago to kind of keep a focus on looking at our success metrics in different way, in a different way, not just on the financial side. We are, I think, very culture centric. We really focus on the people that work for us, there's this, there's this ongoing argument about which is more important, the customer or your staff. And I'm very clearly focused on my staff. What happens from there is that you end up creating a culture of service and a culture of what we call a culture of care. And that ultimately translates into uh, a higher level of service, a more real interaction with uh, our guests. Because we, we know that if people are being real, and I, I'm avoiding authentic because I think authentic is completely overused in our industry and most industries. If we can create a real uh, experience with the employee so that the employee uh, literally has the permission to feel their feelings at work and do it in a safe environment, then, then that's our goal. We have developed what we call the cooperative mode, creating uh, workshops inside of our organization that uh, we've been working on for over 25 years with the director of culture. And this director of culture is, um, is focused on that aspect. But I think the real secret sauce that Innisfree Hotels, this development of real people giving real service uh, from the heart. And it's hard to talk about these things. As I, as I say these words, I, I think of, how cliche they have become. And I want to make sure that, that I convey to you and to anyone that's watching this, that this is an extraordinary approach in my view, um, because we are really digging down underneath uh, the persona that everybody brings to the workplace. We want to make sure that people have permission to feel their feelings at work. And we do that by giving them these tools that we call the cooperative mode. So we go around uh, year after year, hotel after hotel, again and again and again, and train people on how to to be real, to be honest with their feelings, and to give them the space in the workplace to to uh, to feel those feelings. Not 
painted in this view of, of being a professional at work and being someone that's that's um, vulnerable, say at home. We wanted those two to converge. We wanted someone in our in our employment that uh, has permission to feel their feelings, has permission to check out those feelings, has the training to to do that in a safe environment. Because oftentimes, you know, it's that that lack of safety that keeps people from talking from their heart and being vulnerable. You have to be able to get to that personal level in order for you to free up all the potential that that staff member has. And ultimately, if you take it all the way down, you know, if you if you go into this idea that there's a personal and a professional point of view, it's a formula for schizophrenia. You can't you can't bifurcate being who you are and being a professional. Ultimately, at the very end of the day, if you continue down that path, it, it creates a, a very um, disconnected person. Those staff members in our line of business that are completely uh, who they are in the moment, that's that creates the experience that the guest is looking for. That's what we talk about. We talk about in industry hotels, we're creating experiences. That's what we do. We're not cleaning beds or serving drinks or serving meals or we're creating experiences every day. And that, that right there is the secret sauce of industry hotels. And it's a spiritual experience. It is a spiritual connection to the heart and the soul and the mind and recognizing that that is in play all the time. 24 hours a day, you can't avoid it. You can call it something else, you can ignore it. But the fact of the matter is, you know, we're talking about a, a, a spiritual experience where we're taking this amazing attribute of service and hospitality and, and, and sharing it with the customers that come into our hotels. Because what you bring up is a very good point. There is there is immediate, like the first level, the first level is always skeptical. It's one of those too good to be true moments. It's like you can't really do that and run a company. We have, we as a populace, I believe have made some kind of unconscious decision that if you are feeling your feelings, then you're probably not very good at business people make the assumption that I'm just a really nice guy, you know, and that, you know, that I was able to create this, you know, amazing business. I don't know how they figure I did it because you can't do it by being a nice guy all the time. You have to have good solid backbone. You have to be able to come into play with some very strong personalities just because you're valuing the real person and just because you're valuing the essentially spiritual aspect of our relationships doesn't mean that you throw away all your common sense. You know, they can coexist, believe me. And I often say, you know, there you can go about business being a real jerk and it works. You can bully people, you can crush your competition and, and be vindictive and all these things that you see on TV <laughs> as being, you know, something that is being promulgated in, in our current society, particularly lately, I mean, with the divisiveness that's in the United States. But the fact of the matter, that is, that is a TV show. <laughs> it's not reality. People don't react with admiration when they see somebody that can fire you with great authority. That, that has no value. This new wave of staff that's coming into the workplace, there has been this authoritative from the top down approach that, that seemed to be the way to do business. And, I, and what's happening probably in the last five or 10 years, people are discovering that, you know what? People don't work for money. They don't work for somebody that's gonna be a tyrant, someone that is over controlling. If you're gonna get the best out of your people, you have to make sure that they feel value at every level, you know, from, from a diversity standpoint, and then on an interpersonal level that their um, opinions matter, regardless of their position in the company, honoring that is what brings the best out of people. If someone doesn't feel comfortable, if they don't feel safe, 
it is a natural reaction to protect yourself. And when you do that, you're holding back all this access to new ideas, to your personality, to being uh, inclusive. You know, the repercussions of that fear is, is infinite. Whereas if you flip it and you go back and you say, no, you know what? You're a little bit wonky, <laughs> but we love that. That's what makes you who you are. And we want to make sure that when you're at the front desk or you're serving a table or you're uh, cleaning a room, that that comes out. We, we encourage it. And it's fun. If you're not having fun at Ennis Free Hotels, then you really need to go somewhere else. I can't be at every hotel. I can't be at every restaurant. But what I can do is create an atmosphere where those, those personalities and those characters can feel free to be who they are and give, and give them the tools to work through conflict and, and challenges that come up every day and, and different interpersonal relations. That's, that's my job is to create that atmosphere. It's part of what we do every day. We have every single shift for every single hotel, 365 days a year go through uh, a virtue of the day. And we change that every day. And we call it, what we call it, we call it FYI. You know, this is an FYI session. It lasts for five minutes. There are three components. You know, one is a virtue. And we talk the, about the virtue and how the virtue connects with what um, we're doing in our business. Then we share something, and this is all voluntary, that's personal. So we want to, you know, we want to connect with that part of the of the person that's in our team, not from who they are and what title they have, but who they are as humans. And it's and then the third part is we we uh, share something that's funny. We we make sure that everybody laughs at the very end of this. That's what we call FYI. That's what we do every single shift for every single hotel every single day, and it's and it's anchored in the virtue. That's the key. We want to teach virtues to our folks. And what, what happens is very interesting. Um, so what, what we've done is, is we've taken these virtues, we've put it on a beautiful four color uh, handout. It's, it's a physical handout. We pass it around, everybody reads it. And then what they do is they take it home and they put it on their refrigerator and they talk to their kids about it. And they talk to their husbands and wives about it. When they, when they miss a day, they go back and say, what did I miss? I missed the virtue of yesterday. I want to make sure that my kids hear this. And this, this is kind of creating this more holistic approach to, you know, our, our, our family of employees that are out there trying to do the right thing every day. And they're in the hotel business because they genuinely want to be with other people and they enjoy connecting and they want to share their own hospitality. So this is all just kind of feeding back that, that being real part of, um, of, of what we're fostering inside of Innisfree. Think about that for a second. You know, we have 25 hotels. Each one of them has three shifts, you know, a day. That's 75 times a day that we're pushing out a virtue. And virtues are beautiful things. They're non-sectarian. They're, they're universal. They're, they're embraced by all walks of life, no matter what your background and, and is. And it's, uh, you know, people love it. And, and, it, and it creates that kind of that kind of connection right you laugh together you share a virtue together you share something from your personal life together and all of a sudden now you get to see this other person in a different light it's it is remarkable to see the power of simply checking in i mean literally just checking in how y'all how are you doing today only takes 10 minutes and you do this huddle you share you know you check in and you're ready to go i mean it's just it's just very powerful powerful and it, and it creates great team. I believe that um, this training that we do and that we embrace at NS Free creates a foundation where we can we can we can go through things together. 
you know, there is a there is something that uh, binds us all. And when 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 things are difficult, we know enough about each other and our own experience that it's beyond again what we do at the workplace. It's beyond that. And I think any time that you can create that kind of uh, connection, that kind of relationship, it just makes that foundation more and more solid. So when that thing does happen, you know, and you have to go back to your reserve. You know, you have to dig a little deeper. You have to go back to your 60 and 80 hour weeks. When you're doing that and you know that the person that you, that's right next to you is doing the same thing because you've already shared that. This is not new. This is not new behavior. You're not learning new things. You're actually drawing on those, on those small incremental uh, connections that you've created over the last, you know, year, month, five years, 10 years, everybody, everybody knows when, when times are hard because they are. And I can tell you this from a, certainly from an economic standpoint that the hotel business is a bellwether for other industries. You know, we, we rent, our revenues are, are terminated every night at midnight and we start with zero. The next day we have no idea if somebody's going to walk in the door. So our rent roll just went to zero. Now we got to recreate it the next day. And then it goes to zero again. <laughs> so we don't have month long leases. We don't have you know year long leases. We don't have multi year leases that other commercial real estate have. Our starts every day. And what that, what that does, it makes us very um, vulnerable to whatever is going on in society and, and the economy. We are the first to, to recover and we're the first to, to, to uh, feel the, the negative effects of, uh, of an economy. You know, I think a good marriage is everything. You know, my wife and I have been together for 43 years. Um, you know, we, you know, in many ways have grown up together. Um, through all kinds of turmoil. There's nothing better than to go home and say what what's happened, but on both sides, right? And uh, I think that in my particular case is probably where my strength comes from. Beyond that, you know, my faith. As a Baha'i, I know uh, that fundamentally I am loved by God and that that I have a, a reserve that I can go to with the proper prayer and meditation and feel that sense of rightness. Combining those two things, I, th I think uh, it's given me the strength to go, you know, and do the hard task because it is hard sometimes to, you know, when uh, a hurricane blows your hotel away, which by the way, I just had one blown away, to go to the bank and, and say, hey, you know, we got a problem here. <laughs> you know, that hotel that was creating the revenues that paid the mortgage, it's not there. And, um, geez, you know, can we talk? <laughs> and to do that in a way that's, you know, not flippant and it's certainly serious and, you know, the livelihood of all the staff that's, that was there are all of that. You know, hurricanes, I think, are an interesting test of, of your resiliency, you know, because we're on the Gulf Coast, you know, we build on uh, uh, barrier islands where the elevation is seven feet above sea level. <laughs> A lot of people would say that's not a very good, you know, business model. <laughs> I think that strength comes from both my wife and, and from my faith. The first time I went to an EBBF conference was in 1995 or 96. What struck me is that you know, EBBF gave a opportunity to have meaningful discussions about those kind of things we're talking about today, things that are the soft skills, those things that really make uh, for good business. What I appreciate about EBBF is that, um, is that the leadership there allows for that. And they recognize that as being one of these fundament fundamental um, 
prerequisites of good business. We're constantly hearing about ethical breakdown, breakdowns. It seems almost to roll off our backs, you know, when Microsoft or these massive international companies get fined. Uh, lots of, uh, of the financial sector seems to constantly be getting themselves in trouble and paying hundreds of millions of dollars worth of fines. And we kind of take it as kind of business as usual. It happens so often, but you know, the, the value I think of, of doing great business lies in these soft skill areas, these areas that, that when you look at it, you know that it's, it's adding to the human experience. It's not just about creating a great balance sheet. It's, it's not about getting every dime out of every transaction. It's really, looking at yourself from a, a corporate citizen standpoint where you're you're benefiting society in, in ways that other businesses have the opportunity to do. But unless you have this kind of understanding that we're in here, not just making money, but we're changing people's lives. We're, the, we're responsible. If I have 2,000 people working for me, there's probably 4,000, 5,000 people that are depending on my good decisions. And to the degree that I take care of my people and I give back to areas, the cities and towns that I'm located in and create that, that goodwill, all that determines whether or not I'm going to get the best people. I think EBBF underlines that. I think they, I think EBBF creates a space for us to have these conversations and to explore the value of ethics and, uh, spiritual approaches to, um, economic problems it's it's all one you know my wife is amazing <laughs> for, at so many levels but early on she decided that she uh, she's a psychologist and that she would go to a school that offered a program in transpersonal psychology now what is trans transpersonal psychology a lot of people don't know i didn't know at the time but it incorporates not only the emotional, physical part of the, of the human makeup, but also the spiritual part. Imagine, you know, that that would be left out. How could you possibly leave that out of the, of the psychological construct of a human? Many, many, many things that you do on a daily basis, hourly basis, is based on your faith and your belief and your spiritual station and your spiritual uh, awareness. And so that's how we ended up here in Pensacola. She it turns out that this was one of the few universities that offered that curriculum. Maybe there's a dozen in the United States at the time. And I think that's kind of what we're doing here at EBBF. You know, we're looking at it in a more holistic approach and recognizing that there's a spiritual aspect to every transaction. And to the degree that we recognize that, you know, we're going to continue to better society. Yeah, if someone ever came to me and said, Julian was a great guy, you know, his epitaph is he built a pile of hotels and created, you know, billions of dollars worth of economic benefit, I would consider it an abject failure. It would be the worst thing. What I want to be known for is that is that people will look at industry hotels and recognize it for a company that gives back to the community and it's being led by ethical spiritual standards that are explicit and embraced by everybody that works there that's my goal as a member of ebbf is to promulgate that approach to business and in many ways i i believe and this is this is pretty far reaching but i believe business has a has a higher moral challenge there were probably a dozen decisions today and this is a light day where i made some 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 decisions that affected people's lives they weren't easy decisions they could have easily been done from the standpoint of what's what's in it for me instead of looking at it from a, a spiritual standpoint and seeing what's good for the whole and i think that kind of um that kind of uh, pressure for a ethical business person is a much higher standard. I think we do it. We don't even think about it most of the time, but we're in that position. We're changing people's lives every single day because of the economics of our life. And uh, we often, often talk about the, the soul of money, you know, and 
how that becomes, that's something we all deal with. It, it breaks families down and pulls them together and creates friendships and breaks friendships up, divides countries. It can be done in a horrifically bad way, or it can be done at a, at a high standard that I believe EBBF stands for. And I think that's what, that's what makes EBBF special. And that's why I want to be involved with it. 